Hey guys, got some exciting news now. It's time to expand the Bush Company's vehicle fleet. My Isuzu D-Max has been my trusty steed for the last five years and absolutely reliable. Love the Isuzus. In fact, my first four-wheel drive was a 1996 model Isuzu 2.8 turbo diesel. And I had over 630,000 Ks on that vehicle by the time I sold it. Absolute gem. This guy staying in the fleet is going to get handed down and used in the shop quite a bit and taken to shows and so on and I'm sure you'll see me in this thing a few times in the future. Now the decision comes in of what vehicle to get next. Now give you a little hint and let's just cut straight into it. I am super keen on the Toyota Land Cruiser series. Big fan of the 80 series I had. I had a 94 model white 80 series full British spec to start with and before I moved you five years ago ended up with a Japanese spec, one of the last builds, 1996 model 80 series, beautiful vehicle with the 24 valve turbo diesel motor as many guys absolutely love, the 1HD FT motor. And um, so I really wanna get back in there. Um, going through the vehicles, first thought is, all right, what's there, what's comfort, what's luxury, uh, what do I actually wanna get out of a vehicle? 200 series comes up to mind, beautiful. It's a fantastic vehicle super comfortable and you don't have to go for the top of the range Sahara which is a hundred thousand plus dollar vehicle you can actually bring it right down to a GX or a GXL vehicle and get a lot more bang for your buck with basic similar specs then of the amount of vehicles coming through here troop carriers I love a troopy and I definitely see myself being in a troopy one day but the biggest restriction is that my wife and I went to the shop basically had a look at the Toyota dealership and you know you've got the kids we've got two young kids you cannot get the children in the back easily in their baby seats and buckle them in without having a back doors it is an absolute mission then you're going through the nappy and the toilet training stages it's going to be a pain you have to stop every 100 k's for for touring so then I thought all right out of the Toyota Land Cruisers the 76 series in my opinion is probably one of the best balanced vehicles that Toyota has. Mid-wheel base, good size, great for off-road capability. And if you're a two-up person, you know, one or two guys, a couple touring, I think that is an absolute gem of a vehicle. Only negative is, for families, is you're lacking that rear storage space. There really is not much storage space. Um, going through it as well, in Australia, we've got luxury car tax. So that kind of rules the 200 series out going on any wagon being the 78 series or the 76 you in the business capacity you cannot write the vehicle off to tax um, as it's a passenger vehicle not a work vehicle so hence the choice from my 2006 single cab land cruiser 79 series fantastic vehicle had over in africa we pulled a 1hz motor out of that because it was a, a donkey diesel as you all know and we put an 80 series 1hd t12 valve turbo diesel factory spec in there great engine conversion that was a lovely touring car had it back in 2012 toured places like zambia zimbabwe we went to mozambique a heap of times um, great countries to tour in, and that was a great vehicle to up not for a family so hence the choice of going to which is extremely popular and everyone seems to be running them nowadays is a dual cab 79 series so come have a look at what's on the floor my personal beautiful vehicle I love the color sandy top toyota 79 dual cab so huge amount of reasons why i chose this vehicle i've driven the vehicle similar to my d-max so we went through the Toyota Hilux, went through the Ford Ranger, went through the whole bunch, but what I really wanted was a solid front axle touring vehicle again, like my 80 series and like my previous um, Land Cruiser single cab. So that has got the front, solid front axle under there. It was either between that, the Jeep Wrangler or the Suzuki Jimny. Uh, the Jeep wasn't there for me, uh, not with the motor packages we get given here in Australia or get offered in Australia. Suzuki Jimny, awesome vehicle but not suited for my family needs so dual cab ride it off to tax thumbs up um, you don't have luxury car tax another thumbs up one big benefit with these vehicles are is that they hold their value extremely well if i wanted to sell the vehicle in a five or ten year time frame i'll probably get some decent money for it as well now 
big negatives. This goes through that. They are fairly pricey for what you're getting, especially for what you're getting. Value for money is a big no-no, okay? Uh, there's no luxury features. It's pretty much a 1970s John Deere tractor with a fancy V8 motor in it. It just doesn't seem to cut the mustard. Do I love it? Absolutely. The big thing about it for me on the loving side of it is the fact that it is a bare skin and it's so basic it allows me to customize it and really make this vehicle my own. There's a huge amount of accessories available for them which is going to be awesome and you can chop and choose on that. The other negative side of it is the wheel track. Long wheelbase, it turns like an ox wagon from back in the day and the other side of it is that the rear axle is almost too far forward. That's why a lot of guys are doing the 300 mil chassis extensions and chops to extend that wheelbase. So what you end up having is you're having a lot of counter weight over the rear, which generally tries to pick the nose of these vehicles up when going off-road. So they become a bit back heavy and they start lifting. We all know about the 70 series track in the rear, narrower diff in the rear as the front. So it's about a 50 odd mil difference. Um, between the front and the rear wheel line out. So nice wide front, narrow rear. Not a great thing for Toyota. It's actually massively frowned upon. But still, despite all the negatives, awesome vehicle. I can't wait to build it up. Um, so what I want to get at is it's going to be my vehicle build. You guys will learn a bit about tips and tricks that I've learned about touring around the world and how to set up a vehicle. I'm gonna put some new things into play. Certain goals are gonna be achieved with reducing weight in certain categories with what I find extremely important while camping and what's not really necessary. Also things that do not break the bank balance. Okay, so it's not just about, oh, I've got huge money, I'm gonna throw at a vehicle and it's just for the looks and the appeal. No, it's a practical approach. You might learn a couple things of different ideas that I have of how to set up a vehicle. We're going to be doing a few part episode on the build, taking you one by one. Certain products will be the absolute best of the best um, and possibly the most expensive in class. Others are going to be super bang for your buck and it works a treat and is super practical. So I hope you guys enjoy that part of the series. For now, let's go to the inside of the vehicle so we can go through a little bit more what the vehicle has to offer from standard and maybe do a little bit of a test drive and a first impression. On the front end of the vehicle, they come with these, um, basically it's an air inlet. It's not a snorkel, it's not a sealed unit, it's a raised air intake as I would call it. Um, Nice big bumper on the front. I actually really like these front bumpers, even if it wasn't going to be putting on a steel bull bar of sort. That bumper, I really like the look of. Um, the V8 engine on them is good. They've been around for many years now, probably over 10 years already. So great on that um, side of things. The rest of it is really basic, and that's kind of its, its really cool approach. It's got a nice long range tank, or not a long range tank, but a large fuel tank in it. So over 100 liters in that compared to a smaller vehicle which might have only a 70 or 75 litre tank, so that's really great. This is the GXL version, and basically that's the top spec that you can get here in Australia. The reason why I went for it is, well, the main thing is the front and rear factory diff lockers. Now, I had front and rear lockers in my 1994 80 series. The button that turns your front and rear lockers on is identical to my 1994 80 series. So, it's been there, the technology's been around, why fix it if it's broken and why reinvent the wheel? That's the nice thing about it as well. So it has got the lockers in place. Now, a few things we're going to do to this vehicle um, over time. We'll be doing canopy tray builds on the back. I'll be doing um, GVM suspension upgrades. We'll be going through that. We'll be sorting out performance upgrades and a whole bunch of different features on that, as well as adding on water tanks and the whole works. But let's go and have a look inside the vehicle for now. And um, yeah, let's go through what we get on the interior. So let's go through the interior of the vehicle and a few um, things that we'll have to basically look at. What you're getting on the vehicle is pretty basic. Air conditioning is now an included feature. It never used to be. It was an optional extra. So that's amazing. You actually get air conditioning. Uh, I joke about it, but it's actually quite sad that vehicles wouldn't come out with it standard up front. The diff lockers are fantastic. You have your airbag. Now, funny enough, even though this is a more basic styled vehicle, we are actually still having all the more modern technology aids in it. For example, traction control, 
ABS brakes. One big feature which I didn't actually realize until I bought the vehicle was that the rear has got disc brakes. I was under the impression that we were running drums in the back. So super happy that I've got discs in the back. That allows me for awesome brake upgrades and uh, brake disc upgrades if I want to go that route. On the inside as well, um, very basic radio. It comes with two four inch speakers. In fact, if you don't have the volume in the upper 80% mark, you cannot hear anything on the radio. So we'll definitely have to look at getting some better sound quality in here. Lights, simple guys. This is dead simple. Cloth seats. I must say the seats are quite comfortable. I do not mind the seats so far from uh, first appearances. Other than that, the dash cluster is the same on my 2006 Land Cruiser, so it's going to be easy to find and remember where everything like that goes on. One airbag and a passenger airbag. So we've actually got the two airbags in there. Nice safety feature. Other than that, the vinyl interior allows for easy cleaning, which helps. I wish we had the option of having a vinyl floor. This is all carpeted, unlike my D-Max, which I specifically chose with a vinyl floor, which is great for sweeping out beach sand and so on. Um, the center console is super basic, but it will store a few things. Uh, Toyota handbrake, it might as well not be there. The handbrakes do not work very well, and I'll probably have to start doing monthly, if not weekly, handbrake adjustments. That's pretty standard. Now, another feature, being a dual cab, you would think that you would have um, you know, allowances for children's safety points and harnesses there isn't any so when buying this vehicle just note that you're going to have to go to an engineering shop and get in your child restraints or your child fastening restraints for the baby seats put in so um, that will be getting done as well other than that on the interior not much else i can um, i can say about the vehicle it still comes with a cigarette plug and a simple ashtray so keeping it simple basic but that's what i absolutely love about it. I'm going to be able to customize the inside of this vehicle with some great products coming forward. Um, yeah, let's go take it for a test drive and basically get the first, you know, feeling on what the vehicle actually drives like. Starts up easy enough. Now, let's pop the seat belt on. Now, nice thing about it so far is immediately I feel that I'm in a raised seating position. So, um, if you, it's my African mind maybe coming in, if you're going to go touring and you're on a safari and looking at animals, really nice, you're sitting nice and high up, you're probably higher than most um, double cabs on the market. Other than that, on the basic steering side, we have got a cruise control, super thumbs up, love cruise control, traveling, electric windows in this one, which I wouldn't have minded if it was wind down or roll down windows, um, but the electric windows are there. Let's see how she goes, off the mark, super low down, Talk um, for a V8. It's quite interesting how the gearing has worked on these. And you've got a short first gear. Um, that's going to be good for off-roading, though. Must be honest. And funny enough, it doesn't rev in the way that I would have thought a V8 does down low. Um, you know, I've been in a few V8 race cars in the past, but not. Not in the cruise, I'm used to the six cylinder straight six cruises, which are fantastic on that low down torque. And I must be honest, coming quite quite through the gears quite low down, I'm experiencing the same low down torquey feel as I had in a straight six, which is a thumbs up in, in, in my opinion. Um, just cross this road. There we go. Turning circle is bad. All right, massive. It's just so, you, it's difficult to, <laughs> Get into tight spots. I'm going to be doing a lot of four or five point turns. I can see that in the car. Um, other than that, seating position, great. Comfortable. I like the bounce in the seat. It's, it's pretty spacious. The sides are good, holding me in firmly. Um, power. Uh, put my foot down there. Power is shocking in the sense that my D-Max pulls harder than this. Standard. Um, for a four and a half litre engine, I'm very excited to get some mapping going on in future and we're going to pull some proper power out of this baby as I know it has the potential to do it. So we'll see how that goes. We turn down in the cul-de-sac here. Yeah. Yep. Even almost at 4000 RPM 
it's still a little bit um, a little bit shy on power but that's awesome you know what the gearing is great now apparently on the newest spec this is a 2020 model the fifth gearing ratio has been done i think it was back in 2017 or so so we are going to get a lower rpm at cruising speed at about 110 kilometers an hour or so which is going to be good on this vehicle hopefully bring the fuel efficiency down slightly i really like the vehicle even though there's a lot of negatives and i have brought those up i don't want to dwell on the negatives i hate that but um the positive side is is awesome it's a great base platform to start with for a touring vehicle and i think that's what my goal is with this it's not necessarily my daily driver in fact i would hate to drive this vehicle as the daily just doing the basic work and back routine and so on um, i think as a touring vehicle when you're in the holiday mode you're going to take it easy you're going to have a cruise this is going to be awesome it's it's more than spacious enough it's got everything as a great foundation would be in a motor vehicle i love the fact that it's still a manual gearbox on my daily on the dmax it's an automatic and the automatics perform beautifully off-road that's not a negative anymore automatics actually a positive off-road in my opinion um but yeah super stoked super excited to get into this car and along the way i hope that uh, you guys learn a bit and pick up bits and pieces it's not about building the massive most ultimate competition truck or going crazy with the vehicle it's about building a practical touring setup as most of my stuff i try and do is is practical and um and so on i want to give a big shout out to ian way toyota in rockhampton now i'm on the sunshine coast Rockhampton is 600 odd kilometers or let me rather say six hours drive from where I am the guys uh, Greg knew fantastic to deal with there I hate getting involved in a vehicle and you have a pushy salesman ringing up every five minutes saying hey man when you're gonna sign up the deal when you're gonna sign up the deal answered my questions I told what I wanted to do if I said mate is there a bit of discount available it was available and it is offered so definitely shop around see where you're comfortable buying from um, Ian Way, I, I phoned around a lot, all the way down the sunny coast, down the Gold Coast, right up, eventually got up to Rockhampton, bit of a country town up north, fantastic and great service from Ian Way Toyota. So thumbs up to you guys, thank you. And thank you for arranging the Sandy Torp Cruiser. They are quite scarce in Australia, um, or there's a long waiting list. So the color, I can't be happier about. I've been wanting a Sandy Cruiser or a, a, a brown cruiser, and I actually like the brown interiors on cruisers as well. I've been wanting one for ages. And finally, you know, whatever, 20 odd years in, or 15 odd years in, we go on. There we go. So guys, enjoy watching the next few episodes, and let's see what we can do to this thing to make it my ultimate touring vehicle.